All right, let's talk about some more rules for probability. Now, you probably already know a lot of these rules. Um, for example, in the last lecture, we said that the probability of an event has to be greater than zero. In fact, it has to be between zero and one. Okay, so that basically takes care of property one. Um, in this in the in this description of these properties, S is the sample space, and E and F are just events in the experiment. So it makes sense that you know the the probability of an, an event is greater than zero, and the probability of the sample space is one, right? Because the probability that something in the sample space is going to happen is a hundred percent because the sample space is the set of all the outcomes, right? So if we've got all of the possible outcomes, then um, some outcome is going to happen with a one hundred percent certainty. This last this. Third property says that if E and F are mutually exclusive, then we can add their probabilities to get the probability of either E or F happening. Okay, but this is it's important to note that this is only if they're mutually exclusive. All right, so recall what mutually exclusive means, right? That means that they cannot happen together. Events are mutually exclusive if they don't intersect, so their intersection is the empty set. Okay, so if we wanted to draw a Venn diagram of that, uh, here's E, event E, and here's event F, okay? So they don't intersect, right? They have no elements in common. And here's our sample space, right? So that's what mutually exclusive looks, looks like. We can test for, um, we can test that two events are mutually exclusive if their intersection is the empty set, empty set, right? Which means those two events cannot happen simultaneously. All right, so let's take a look at the first example here. This is an example with mutually exclusive events. All right, we've got it um, says the superintendent of a metropolitan. Uh, school district has estimated the probabilities associated with the SAT verbal scores of students in that district. Um, and the results are shown in the table, and you can see that they're broken down, you know, by score, right? You've got scores less than 300, 300 to 400, 400 to 500, 500 to 600, 6 to 7, and, and above 700. And you can only get one score on the SAT, right, for, for the verbal score. And so these events, these are essentially the events. These are the, what we might call the simple events, but these are the ev events of the sample space. And they're mutually exclusive because you can't fall into more than one of these categories. So that means we can add probabilities. So when you have mutually exclusive events, it's nice because you can just add. So we're going we're gonna to talk about um, the case where you don't have mutually exclusive events next. But let's just go ahead and work through this one. This is much like the problems we were doing in the last lecture. So the first, um, well, it says if a student is selected at random, what's the probability that his or her um, SAT verbal score will be more than 400? So we want the probability, and we're calling the score x, I guess. So um, x is greater than 400. All right. Well, let's just look it up on the table. So 400 is here. So, oops, I guess I, it's greater than, right? It's greater than, I think I said less, but I meant to say greater than. Um, 400 is here, and we want to know what's the probability of it being greater than that. So we need to add up all of these, all of these probabilities. Okay, so we're just going to um, add 0 0.23 plus 0 0.19 plus 0 0.07 plus 0 0.01. Okay, and if you add all of that up, you get 0 0.50. So 50% chance that um, a student selected at random uh, will have scored greater than 400. All right, so the next one is asking, what's the probability that the score is less than or equal to 500? Okay, so again, we can, I'm going to erase some of these markings so that I can show you. Okay, so less than 500. So 500 is here. So I guess um, we are looking at all of these, all of these probabilities right here. 
right? We need to add those all up because they're all mutually exclusive events and we can just add. So 0 0.23 plus uh, 0 0.31 plus 0 0.19, when I add those up, I get 0 0.73, okay? So 73% chance that a student selected at random has scored below 500. All right, and then finally we're asked to find the probability that the score is between 400 and 600, right? So greater than 400, but less than or equal to 600. So 400 less than X, less than or equal to 600. All right, so let's find that on here. So 400 to 600, let me, again, I'll get rid of some of these markings. I can mark it again. Um, 400 to 600, all right, so we're looking at, so here's 600 and here's 400. Okay, so we're looking at just basically these two. All right, so we're just gonna add them, add them up. So 0 0.23 plus 0 0.19, gives us 0 0.42, all right? So there's a 42% chance that a student scored between 400 and 600. All right, um, I will meet you in the next video.